I understand and appreciate your intention to get this right and uh, do what we can to prevent death by suicide. But I'm troubled by a few things, and I'd like to elaborate. It appears to me that uh, General Bergman and Dr. Rowe have continually come to you willing to address your concerns, and yet they keep finding that the goalposts continue to move with ill-defined language. Uh, we do better, of course, when we work together. I think you know that, Mr. Chairman, and, and up to this point, uh, I think we have, uh, up to this point, uh, now we have this bill and we've had a lot of controversy. And this should be our number one priority to prevent these suicides. Uh, and, and you know what, Mr. Chairman, I, I talk to a lot of groups, veterans groups in my district, uh, media, and I say that this is maybe one of two, uh, and I'm on both committees, energy and commerce and veterans, where we do get things done and we work in a bipartisan fashion. I want to continue that tradition, and I think you do too. We do better when we work together and compromise, and it requires, again, uh, you know, the minority and majority party um, making concessions. Uh, second, as to the substance of the ANS, I appreciate you wanting to try to connect funding to this collective impact model, but restricting funding to only these types of organizations is unworkable. Uh, to newer nonprofits or others in rural or remote communities. In my, my district, we have a lot of uh, uh, great organizations that work on this issue on a daily basis that would not qualify uh, for this grant program. I, I would argue that we can all find organizations in our district that are doing great cutting edge work, as I said, to prevent suicide and that, that would not meet these overly prescriptive this overly prospective model. Sorry about that. I'm not saying that we should give funding away to any group who wants it. No way. But we are really trying to duplicate the success. If we are trying to duplicate the success of the supportive services for veterans' families, uh, that program, uh, and, and it's reduced homelessness. Uh, I know in my district, a tremendous amount. We should embrace building the same type of flexibility into this program. Chairman Levin and I conducted two field hearings earlier this year on veterans' homelessness, one in San Diego and one in the Tampa Bay area near my district. We heard that SSVF and other VA programs were working, but providers who testified were practically begging us to provide flexibility to try new approaches to see what they can do to get the last remaining homeless veterans off the streets. I see the debate we are having today on providing grants to com combat veteran suicide in, these sa in the same lens. Uh, how are we qualified sitting here in this room to know which model is best? Okay, which way is the best way to go? The answer is that we are not qualified. We're not the experts. Instead, we should listen to the successful community providers, many of whom the chairman invited to the round table and heralded as great programs, who said that the approach the chairman wants to use, and, and, and we've gotten this information, uh, they say that this approach is unworkable, this particular uh, approach, the ANS. One of these well-respected organizations, America's Warrior Partnerships, called the approach for rural communities as difficult, costly, and impersonal to implement in a recent letter to the committee, and we're speaking of the chairman's ANS now. I'm also confused by the chairman's shift to dictate the type of organizations that deserve federal dollars. Earlier this year, both this committee and later the full House approved Chairman Levin's and my bill, H.R. 2326, the Navy SEAL Chief Petty Officer William Bill Mulder bill, the Transition Improvement Act of 2019. This legislation is meant to ease the transition from military to civilians for transitioning service members. Section five of this bill, and I don't have much time left. Section five of this bill authorized $10 million and grant funding to community organizations to help fund programs 
that helped assist veterans in reaching the goal of a seamless transition and true reintegration. The bill does not require the nonprofits to be a hub or use the collective impact model for funding to be granted as we knew that the uh, more Congress, they would get out of the way and let the people on the ground who know what they are doing to do their jobs. And, and that's what's so important. My question to the members on the other side of the aisle, what has changed? We authorized via voice vote $10 million for a very similar grant program to the one we are discussing in the IMPROVE Act today. Basic reasons suggest that the approach Chairman Levin's, that we used with Chairman Levin's bill uh, was designed to ease transition and hopefully eliminate suicide. Uh, it was uh, appropriate uh, with, within six months. Why are we throwing this out uh, as, as part of the discussion? I agree that the status quo in our approach to ending veteran suicide is unacceptable. We must find a solution that is realistic and one that will help good community-based non-providers provide needed services without the red tape required in the Takano ANS. I urge adoption of the Roe substitute and yield back, and I thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the extra time.